Hi, I'm Joel Osteen. I'm with my friends Lee and Shanae Stokes, pastor of Destiny. This weekend, they'll be giving away a copy of my new book. Visit Destiny this weekend with Lee and Shanae Stokes, where Joel Osteen's newest book, The Power of I Am, will be given to all first-time visitors. We're Lee and Shanae Stokes, and we can't wait to meet you and your family. Destiny is a great place for you and your friends. Join us at Destiny and get Joel's new book. Invite your family and friends. But watch this. Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. For no person will be justified. In the New Testament, when you see the word justified, it's the same word as righteous. Righteous. What does righteous mean? To be totally acquitted from all your sin. To be justified. Justified. To be just justified the way we were taught it. Just as if I'd never sinned. You're perfectly right with God. And it's God's righteousness. You can't get any more right with God. All right? It's his own righteousness. For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. Doing right does not make you right with God. Many believers don't understand that. The world definitely doesn't understand this. You ask somebody on the street, are you going to heaven? Yeah, well, why? Well, you know, I haven't killed anybody. I can't, you know, I pretty much I keep the Ten Commandments. You're going to find out in this passage that has nothing to do with going to heaven. Zero. Watch this. For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted from ju- and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not mere perception, but acquaintance, but an acquaintance with sin, uh, which works toward repentance. That means uh, changing of your thinking, faith and holy character. Verse 21. But now say now. The righteousness of God has been revealed independently and altogether apart from the law or the Ten Commandments, right? Although actually it is attested by the law and the prophets, the law and the prophets told about a time that righteousness would would come by simply believing in the Savior. Let's read on. Namely, the righteousness of God, which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on who? Jesus Christ the Messiah and it is meant for all who do what? Who believe for there's no distinction. Why? Since all of y'all are sinning. No, no, I want to make, make sure you understand. All of us are missing it. All of us. The Bible says that which is not of faith is sin. Doubt is sin. So do you repent every time you doubt? The word sin is uh, hamartia. It means to miss the, the miss the mark of perfection. None of us are able to do that. And that's what this next verse says. He says, back up to verse 22, so you can see it in continuity. I just, if you would. Namely, the righteousness of God, which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ. And it is meant for all who believe. For there's no distinction between anybody since all have sinned and are, fa- and are falling short. All of us are falling short of the, of the honor and glory which God bestows and receives. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God. How? Freely and gratuitously by his grace, his unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided where? All right. So you're made right by believing in Jesus. Why? Because of his grace. All right. By believing that's through faith. Look at verse 28. (laughs) For we hold that a man, that means a woman, mankind is justified and made upright by faith independently and distinctly apart from good deeds, works of the law. The observance of the law has nothing to do with justification. Oh, some of y'all sitting there like. What they've been teaching me for the last 80 years of my life then. Now, now watch. I got to really break this down. Come here, Bob. Can you come up here for a second? Make some noise for Pastor Bob. Now watch. God loves me. I'm born again. It would be a sin right now to punch Bob. Just punch him. Right? God's going to love me nonetheless. But guess what? Bob not. So sin affects me. You right? 
I, if I, 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 so I could do something, come over here and smack him. God's going to love me, but my sin has consequences. That's right. it's, sin has inherent consequences in it. Yes. You say, well, oh, but God has forgiven me. I can go commit, a, I can go fornicate and adulterate and lusticate and liacate. <laughs> God is going to still love you, but there's going to be consequences. Your wife is going to divorce you. Yes, sir. You're going to end up pregnant, going to end up with a jacked up life. Now, are y'all with me? Make some noise for Pastor Bob. I would never smack Bob. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all get that? So this is not a license to sin. When you really get this, think about this. I love my wife. I love her. I adore her. She loves me. She loves me unconditionally. I love her unconditionally. But if I or her, we go out and start cheating on each other, guess what? The marriage is going to be over. You follow what I'm saying? She's not going to put up with that kind of punish, that kind of abuse, and neither will I. You follow what I'm saying? But God's going to still love us. Amen. Right? You can go rob them. How many of y'all want some chicken right now? Anybody getting hungry? You can go rob the church's chicken right over here around the corner, right down the street right here. And God's going to love you the whole time. But, but the police aren't. They're going to put you in jail. You're going to have a jail ministry. All right? Okay, now, jump on over in your Bible. Watch this. Jump. Ooh, this is going to get better and better. Watch this. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Hurry, hurry. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, the, now the whole book of Romans, I like to call it the Magna Carta of the gospel. It's explained, every detail about your salvation is explained in the book of Romans. Paul says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world... And death through sin. So what makes people sinners is not their sin. What makes them sin is that they're born into sin. What made every human being born into sin is one man. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world. What was his name? Adam. I like it when I say that and somebody goes, Jesus, no, 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 don't get it. What's his name? Adam. Adam is his name right there. Don't. <laughs> Therefore, just as through one man, Adam, sin entered the world through the one man and death. The consequences of sin, death, poverty, lack, disease, all that came through one man's action, right? Okay. Y'all see, stand up, mom, so everybody can see how pretty you are. Look at my mom. Isn't she beautiful? Turn around. That's my mother right there. See how, go ahead and sit down. Make some more noise for us. See. Mama stood up there all the day until I said, sit down. Now, now, you see how fair complected mama is? Come on, y'all see what I said? She's real fair. That's why I'm high yellow like this. Now my daddy is, uh, as my mom would describe him, black as an ace of spades. So I came out not quite as white as my mom, but not quite as black as my daddy. I came out as a hybrid of the two. You follow what, I, follow what I'm saying? And so, because I came from her, and I came from him, I came out like this. Because we all came from Adam. We all were born into sin. And this is why Jesus said, you must be born again. Because you were born, all of us were born into sin. No, no action of our own. We, we didn't have a choice in sinning. We're born, and you don't have to teach your kids how to lie. They gonna figure it out. You have to train them. They cute right now, but just keep watching. The sin principle will show up. All right? Some of y'all found that out, haven't you? Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to how many people? Everybody. Why? Because we all sinned. Now we all started sinning. Why? Though because of Adam. Look at the next. Look at verse seventeen. Jump to verse seventeen. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through that one. That word reign right there is basilia. It means reign like a king. How many of y'all have been to a funeral? How many of you have seen a funeral? How many of you have ever heard of a funeral? Okay, all of us, all of us have. All of us have been touched by death in one way or another. By sickness. Why? Because of one man's offense. When Adam and Eve, they ate of that fruit it, and they, they betrayed God, they sinned. God gave them free more, made them free moral agents. They had the choice. They chose to eat of that fruit, right? They, and it, the Bible says, in the day that Jesus said, God said it, the day you eat of that fruit, you should surely die. Did they die the day they ate of the fruit? They died spiritually. The outcome, the effect 
of that, what happened inside, and what death was, was separation from God. So, the position of a person who's born again is their spirit, uh, not born again, is their spirit is not unified with God's. When you get born again, like the picture showed, your spirit becomes again unified, reconciled unto God, reconciled, remade one with God's. All right. Okay. For by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. And how many of y'all have been touched by lack in one way or another? Yeah. Touched by sickness in one way or another at some point in your life. We all have. All that's the result of Adam. All right. Watch this. Much more than that. Now we see the impact of that. Much more than the impact of that. The gravity of that. Much more those who receive abundance of unearned, undeserved favor. How do you get it? Receive. Those who receive, receive a little bit of it, abundant, as much as you want. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. What are they going to do? Will Basilia in Zoe life through one Jesus Christ. The way that death reigns have y'all, we, we all said we've been touched by it. He said, if you'll receive abundance of unearned unfavor and the gift of righteousness, you'll reign in life much more than death reigns. What that is, is you get the power over sickness. You get the power over disease. You get the power over lack. Say, I've got it now. All right. Now watch this. Verse 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to how many men? Everybody. Resulting in condemnation, even so through one man with a capital M's righteousness. Whose righteousness? Your righteousness? One man's righteousness. One, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. Because of what Jesus did, the free gift has been offered to everybody. Free gift. Of, God's not mad at the world. He's madly in love with the world. Your family and friends don't know that. Their sins have already been paid for. In fact, the Bible lets us know that God's already written every human being's name in the book of life by faith. If you read in the book of Revelation, it says, if you don't receive Jesus, he says, I'll have to blot your name out. God is expecting and wants every human being. It's not God's desire that any should perish, according to Peter. God loves humanity. He wrote their name in the book. How do they get in it? Accept him. Receive the free gift of grace. Well, you go to him and tell your family that. God's not mad. Watch this. And in fact, once they receive him, they receive all that God has. And if you get them locked in church, they're going to start walking in abundance, start walking in healing, start walking in joy. Oh, y'all didn't get excited about that? All right. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in what? Justification of life. Righteousness of life. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, is that you? One man, Adam's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made. Righteousness is a gift. When you receive, okay, let me read on. Let me read on. I got to hurry up, y'all. Y'all keep messing with me. Verse 19. Did I read that one already? Okay, okay. Jump on over to verse six, uh, chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. We're almost done. I, I, I wish I could, y'all, but I got another service. <laughs> Watch this. When you got, when you were not born again, unbeliever, sinner, could you have just started doing a bunch of good deeds and nice deeds and then be born again? No, oh, it has nothing to do with that. Could you just stop sinning and do nice stuff all the time? Pay your tithes, come to church, stop fornicating and lighticating and lusticating. And I'm going to be good, I'm good with God. It has nothing to do with that. Right? You were born into sin, so you got to be born again into righteousness. Now, your good deeds couldn't get you out of sinnership. Is that right? How many of you believe you could do enough good deeds and when you were a sinner, and then that would just change your ranking from sinner to, to born again? Nobody knows. We know that. All right? That can happen. Watch this. 
So if I'm born again into righteousness, <laughs> here we go. Y'all know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Can my unrighteous deeds now make me unrighteous again? Some of y'all sitting there like, I better not answer on that one. Because we've been taught that our unrighteous deeds can take away what Jesus did. But we don't think that our righteous deeds can overpower what Adam did. If that's true, what Adam did was stronger than what Jesus did. That can't be true. We just read it. This is what death did through Adam much more. Those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Now, let's read the Bible and you'll see it. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, you were a slave to it, couldn't get out, even if you walked the little ladies across the street and paid your tithes with a D. <laughs> it wasn't going to get you out of sinnership. But thank be the God, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed where? From the heart. Not in doings, from the heart, that form of doctrine. The truth, the gospel, which you were delivered. Read the next one. And having been set free from that prison of sin, you became slaves of righteousness. You're in a prison called righteousness. If I'm in a prison of righteousness, if I miss it, sin. Will that all of a sudden put me back in a prison of sin? No way. You're locked in a prison of righteousness. Why? Because it's not your righteousness that got you there. It's the righteousness of God that got you there. Say I'm the righteousness of God. Now watch this. Now watch this. I, we got that revelation back in 2008. When I started preaching it back in 2008, Creflo hadn't preached it yet. So when I started preaching it at the old building, people got mad at me and said, he's a heretic. That ain't right. Joseph Prince wasn't quite, wasn't quite on the map yet. He was on the map, but we didn't hear about him yet. You got it? Back in 2000. So, so I didn't know about, and people got mad at me and said, he's a heretic. People moved to Atlanta and was talking about me, running me down and everything. Started going to Creflo's church. They called me back when Creflo said, y'all, throw away all my tapes. You're the righteousness of God and you can't be lost. People started emailing me and saying, I'm sorry, Pastor Lee. <laughs> Are you really? I got nervous too. I was like, Lord, now how are you going to give me this kind of revelation and everybody leaving my church? <laughs> and I just bought a new building. Good gracious Jesus. Wasn't it crazy, baby? <laughs> and having been set free from sin, you, you became slaves of righteousness. Now, if, you, if, you, if you'll get this with me and get the CDs, many of us, how many of y'all were here when we went through this transition or you've been here in the last few years? So you understand that I'm the righteousness, you're the righteousness of God. How many of y'all know that? All right. How many of you've seen this change your life in terms of the sin that the grip, sin had a grip on you? Maybe it was cussing, maybe it was drinking, uh, getting drunk and whatever, it was drug, whatever, whatever. And then you started declaring, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I've got this from Pastor Prince. Pastor Prince said when he first started understanding this, he would say before his feet hit the ground, he would say it a hundred times before he got out of bed. Now, declaring it didn't make him righteous. He was already righteous. But it was helping to get his soul in line with what, what was already done in his heart, in his spirit. Y'all following me? He was renewing his mind to what had already happened. Are you with me? Now, I started doing it too, and I did it just like this on my fingers. I mean, I had to do it because it looked like everything was falling apart. I would hold up 10 fingers in, in my bed before I get out of bed. I go, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That, that verse we read there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I do all 10 fingers and I get to this side, then I go, I'm the righteousness of Christ, God in Christ Jesus. Go all the way back down, go all the way back down this way, and that would be 20. I'd go back again. <laughs> go back again. I'd do it five, I'd do it 50 times. Just I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. After months and months of that, I started, I'm righteous. Before I knew it, some of the problems and the sin, the sin stuff in my mind and the sin stuff just started falling off. Guess what I started doing once I realized that? I took the healing verse too, which is right before this in Isaiah. It says, he, by his stripes you're healed. 
it's the same thing. It's in your heart already. Watch this. Let's read what Romans 6 says. Because Romans 6 says, it, it's going to show I don't have to tell you. Whatever, let's just read it. Look at Romans 6, chapter five, verse 5. We're going to close. All the way to 11. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death. Yes. Certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Right? He's explaining what happened. How your spirit died. And you got the brand new spirit of Christ. Watch these words. And circle this if you've got your Bible open to Romans 6. Knowing this. Knowing this. Okay? It happened, but knowing this. Circle that in your Bible because that's paramount. It's what you don't know about what you've got, what you've already got that keeps you from realizing the benefit of it. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him and that the body of sin might be done away with. He's talking about your spirit. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. He's talking about what happened to you on the inside. But knowing this, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Your spirit man died. You've been freed from that sinful nature in your spirit. All right. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, knowing, I want you to see that every bit of this has to do with you knowing it. Remember the three meant spirit, this is where it is, but you got to get it in this soul, knowing it. All right. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, for everybody. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Watch this, verse 11. Likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Recognize this, knowing this. Reckon what's already happened, know this. That's what causes the life of God to live into your body. What causes sin to fall off of you without effort is you knowing that you're the righteousness of God. The dead nature of sin has died and the life of Christ is alive in me. If Christ rose from the dead and lives his life now into God, we believe we reckon ourselves that same way. Our spirit now had died and we're alive in Christ. Knowing that is what causes that to permeate into your flesh. The same way you knowing that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ will cause those addictions to fall off of you. Focusing on you're the righteousness, confessing it, declaring it with your mouth. Does confessing I'm the righteousness of God make you righteous? No, you're already righteous. Watch this. Does confessing I'm healed make you healed? You're already healed. Okay, I, I, I got to get you to see this. Y'all following what I'm saying? Does confessing you're rich make you rich? You're already rich. Confessing it causes you to reckon in your soul what's already been done in your spirit. Close your Bible. We're already ready for next service. Hold on. Y'all got to stick with a pastor on this. Will y'all keep coming back? Because this is, okay, now, let me, let me close with this. You're righteous. Why? Because you got born again. If you miss it, somebody pulls in front of you on the way, pulling out the parking lot, and you start cussing them out in your mind. <laughs> Mother, father, what in the world? Shut the front door. <laughs> Are you still righteous? Now, that would be the time to say, Father, I thank you that I'm righteous. Even in the middle, come on, can I, can I talk straight to y'all? Say you're addicted. You're addicted. Here's the best, best thing to do. Father, I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. I thank you, Lord. These no longer have a chain on me. I'm righteous. You keep doing that. Watch this taste go from you. Whatever it is, whatever sin, I ain't going to call it all out, but y'all know, whatever it is, whatever it is that, that haunts you, you got I wish, and the devil will condemn you about it and say, see, that's, you really ain't saved. Yes, you are. See, what we've been taught in the church is, we've been taught, you know, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm, let the poor say I'm, but then the Bible says, if you, 
believers think if they sin, they're supposed to confess their sin. You're supposed to confess your righteousness. Come on back. I can see I got to work with you. I got to work with you. Amen. Say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say I'm healed by his stripes. I'm rich because he became poor. I've got it now. Y'all see how important it is to renew your mind and say it 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 till you believe it. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I want to teach you for about six more hours here. Come back next week. Close your Bible. Y'all get that? Register today at leestokes.org for Marriage on the Rock marital classes at Destiny. The classes will be held each Sunday morning during 11 a.m. service to help you discover God's design for your dream marriage. Whether you've been married for years or just preparing for the journey, Marriage on the Rock is the essential resource that will transform your relationship. Register today at leestokes.org for Marriage on the Rock marital classes at Destiny. The classes will be held each Sunday Sunday morning during the 11 a.m. service. Get registered today. word for it come get a word for yourself i want to thank you so much for taking time out to watch this broadcast here at destiny our mission is to win souls make disciples and live destiny i know that god has great things in store for you and your family and if you've never made jesus the lord of your life it's so simple just say this simple prayer right after me Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died and rose again for me. Come into my heart and be my Savior. If you said that simple prayer, we believe you just got born again. I want to encourage you to come and be with us at any of our services right here at Destiny. Know that God has great things in store for you. God bless you. and fulfill God's good plan for your life at Destiny.